Uh, whoa. Looks like the battle here was intense. The Master Diviner must have launched the campaign while we were delayed in the Artisanship Commission. Time is of the essence. The most important task for the Xianzhou La Fu is suppressing the Stellaron. General Jing Yuan tasked the Master Diviner with commanding the Cloud Knights. He would have known she'd act on the results of her divination. Thank goodness the General didn't make us go with the Knights. Fighting is totally different from adventuring. All these people... it's tough to bear. I'm afraid this is nothing, Benefactor. Centuries ago, an emanator of abundance besieged the Lafu with the aim of taking the Ambrosial Arbor. They destroyed half our delves and killed most of the Cloud Knights. For long-life species, such events are more like yesterday's memories than ancient history. This awful spectacle is child's play in comparison. Hey, is that supposed to make us feel better? It's hard to tell if the Master Diviner won or lost here. A draw? This isn't a tournament, you know! I can't see many Cloud Knights. The Sienjo must have fought well. Not necessarily. There'd usually be a base with supporting forces set up after a successful engagement, but we don't see any of that. Let's look around and see if we can find some clues. Uh, be careful! Those mon- Look, there's someone over there! Here! There are still survivors here! <clears throat> You're not the knights. What is your purpose here? It's dangerous. We're reinforcements sent by the general. Where's everyone else? <laughs> Resorting to short life species as reinforcements. <laughs> Jing Yuan is truly running out of options. <laughs> Run! She's a disciple of Sanctus Medicus! Silence! If my healing worked, you'll become one of us. And then it's not just me they'll be running from. Hurry! Leave here! I can't control myself anymore! Oh, oh, hold on! We'll find someone to help! Don't waste your time! They've converted me! I don't have much longer. Go! The Master Diviner's troops are ahead! Let's go. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus were in hiding for so long. Now they finally show their face. Did the Master Diviner fail to foresee this? Be careful, benefactors. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus worship Yaosha, the plague's author, the greatest enemy of the Xianzhou. The Alliance has been trying to root out their secret organization for millennia. It's no coincidence that they've chosen this moment to reveal themselves. Who goes there? Show yourselves! Wait, it's you. Quickly, in here! It's dangerous outside. You recognize us? Are you not the General's guests? The Master Diviner prophesied your arrival. We were ordered to wait for you under any circumstances. Yes, the Master Diviner ordered us to remain stationed here and went to scout ahead. They're saying the disciples of Sanctus Medicus have returned. They haven't been seen for an age. The troops are anxious. It's good that you're here. 
The Master Diviner said the Knights weren't to move out until you arrived. Please wait in the camp. We'll decide on our next steps once the Master Diviner returns. That the Cloud Knights received orders not to advance is a bad sign. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. I've heard the name before. If memory serves, they're an underground sect of the Abundance that's said to have lain dormant within the Sienjo, plotting to overthrow the Alliance. The Stellaron has certainly caused Abundance-like abnormalities. Is that what motivated the Disciples to come out of the Shadows? No. The Knight's main force remains intact. Something must have happened. Something we're not aware of. The Master Diviner isn't here. Let's head into camp and see what we can learn from the troops here. Good idea. Why don't you take a look around, Benefactors? My feet need a rest. <sighs> Forgive me for being brief. Warfare is a dangerous business. There's no time for idle chat. We took over this place a few hours ago under the Master Diviner's command. It was only afterwards that we learned our enemies were none other than the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, those who worshipped the plagues author. Everything was going as planned. The sorcerers of the disciples and the fantastic creatures they commanded were no match for us. Then, after a while, our comrades suddenly started to slaughter one another. Thanks for your intel. I'll dispatch someone immediately. The greatest fear of the Sienjo people is succumbing to our Mara-struck form around others. To do so means that we have given up on being human, lost the abomination sleeping in our immortal blood, and violated the Rainbow's admonishments. What the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus did are despicable acts that every Alliance resident detests. I swear to the Arbiter that I will avenge my comrades. You want to ask questions? Uh, fine. But I must be present the whole way through. This part needs to be recorded as testimony. <laughs> Finally, someone to talk to. These Cloud Knights are so serious, so boring. <laughs> that shining seed? <laughs> I've seen it. So beautiful. If you gaze into it, there's a voice inside that speaks to you. Do you still remember Kakolia? Um... <laughs> the Master said we could inject new life into the Ambrosial Arbor with it. <laughs> I didn't believe it at first. We tried many methods, spending multiple lifetimes of short life species. Yet the Arbor showed no signs of resurrection. But look upon it now. <laughs> Only the power of an eon can recreate the miracle. Yes, yes, the mighty Sanctus Medicus, the Abundance! So you witnessed it too? The Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. <laughs> Magnificent. In the Befall era, so far in the past that even long-life species cannot recall, Sanctus Medicus the Abundance gifted the Ambrosial Arbor to the Sienjo Lofu. With that sacred tree, humanity realized many miracles. The fallow earth, the western soapberry, the altered flesh. But that devilish archer ruined everything. They twisted right and wrong and erased Sanctus Medicus' achievements. But soon, soon we will return to the glory of the Befall Era. <laughs> You've seen the fantastic creatures that fought with us. They are only minor gifts of the Ambrosial Arbor. Shut it, rambling rodent. The Cloud Knights will root all of you out soon. What did we do? We cured our kin. <laughs> it must hurt to be trapped in such weak flesh and blood. You scum! If the order allowed, I would cut you down now. 
Oh, you don't understand. A short life species couldn't understand. Mara struck? Bah! It's a second life gifted by Sanctus Medicus. To eliminate the self, to achieve transcendence, a life of true freedom. I see a desire for power in your eyes. This life is too short for you, isn't it? <laughs> I can... I can help you. Don't listen. His words are poison. We're just having fun, sir. <laughs> Without the blessing of the Abundance, you short-life species would never be able to endure the transformation. Master Divider, you're back. I have kept you waiting, but the deceit of the Disciples is laid bare to me now. I was merely being courteous. According to my divination, you've hardly been here long. The conflict is difficult, Master Diviner, but you have led your forces from the front lines and beyond in pursuit of the enemy. Admirable work. Hardly. A Diviner must acquire first-hand knowledge in order to calculate the future. Collecting intelligence in this way assists me in achieving the right answer. Wait. What's all this about a difficult conflict? The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been scheming for a long time, but our army is in no way inferior. How can things be so difficult? It would seem you came prepared. <sighs> the first time we met Madame Yukong, she said something like, this is a Sienjo affair, and there's no need for the Express to get involved. And now, here we are, running around doing everything. Even the IPC takes it easier on us. Oh, let me guess. What are we up to this time? Could it be heading to the front lines? Leading the Cloud Knight charge? Well, try this on for size. Nope! I can't stand any more of this fighting. So there! <sighs> Who said you'd be heading to the battlefield? Uh, we're not? Jingyuan's orders. He said that the value of unexpected guests lies in the unexpected. The Cloud Knight's assault was to demonstrate our power to the enemy head-on. Now it is time for the unexpected. Please, come with me. After receiving the Ambrosial Arbor, the Alchemy Commission was once the Lafu's most vital commission. After all, it was they who changed the Xianzhou natives into long-life species. They also developed, but in the end, the Alchemists grew discontented and began to obsess over the manipulation of life. Research into the Arbor poisoned their minds. The more they pursued it, the more they longed for it. Morning bells chime in a dream. Evening mist gathers around me. Do you see that? What huge elixir crucibles. There's still smoke coming out of them. This is where the alchemists practiced the way of immortality in ancient times. They erected elixir crucibles here to absorb the power of the arbor, turning fantasy into reality. Since the smoke from the Crucibles never ceases, this place was named Eve Mist Mansion. An elegant name, but as far as the art of war is concerned, it's a death trap. As long as the Crucibles are lit and the smoke continues to linger, we cannot get any closer. This is why the Cloud Knights lost control and became Mara struck? Indeed. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus infuse the smoke that permeates this delve with medicinal pellets that elicit Mara. Unless the Cloud Knights were able to march with their breath held, they would be doomed to fall into disarray. Moreover, 
No one can know whether their comrade was about to be stricken with Mara. Is there anything better than fear for destroying the morale of an army? The Cloud Knight's first assault was just a cover. You're using the main army to attract the enemy's attention, while we douse the elixir crucibles and stop the smoke. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus renounced their century of secrecy and chose to reveal themselves, meaning they feel confident of victory. But no matter how well prepared they may be, their focus has always been the Cloud Knights. They are completely unaware of your existence and capacity, and in short, cannot be prepared against you. Indeed, this demonic vapor is a weapon targeted against the Cloud Knights. The Ambrosial Arbor is taboo for the La Fu, and the Sien Alliance has always been fiercely independent. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus could never have guessed that the General would seek outside help. They won't be prepared against short life species. Is this what General Jing Yuan meant by unexpected guests? I wouldn't hazard a guess. All I can say is that the predictions of the Stellaron Hunters were more accurate than mine. The future that Kafka seeks is becoming reality. One step at a time. I do not wish to be their puppet either. In any case, we do not walk alone and unhindered on our paths. Our choices define us and influence others. The duty of the Master Diviner is to bring luck and avoid misfortune. I don't want my choice to plunge the Lafu into a terrible future. To return to the matter at hand, only you can douse the Elixir Crucibles without being harmed by them. What say you? <sighs> Fine. I didn't hear a please, but... Seeing as we do kind of have superpowers around here... Mr. Yang, what do you think? I will come at once when the smoke dissipates. You won't be left to fend for yourselves. <coughs> what? It's not too late to practice holding my breath. We're still far from the Elixir Crucibles. I'm no healer, but I do know that dosage is important in the application of poisons. <laughs> Even so... Okay, I admit it. I'm terrified. I'm still young. I don't want to become Mara struck so soon. Out of the question. Jing Yuan gave me authority over the Cloud Knights. If I can't stand on the front lines, then how can I succeed him as a general? <clears throat> how can I win the hearts of the people? Do you not trust me? <clears throat> if I told you I wasn't certain, would you turn back on the spot? Nonsense! I'm very certain! 100%! Though I'm sure a little reassurance wouldn't hurt. You don't know what being Marastruck actually means, do you? The healers believe that the Marastruck condition is related to memories. Unsurprisingly, long-life species have long lifespans, but there is a limit to the brain's capacity. After centuries and millennia, a long-life species' emotional threshold becomes higher and higher. Simultaneously, their memories fade and become dull under the erosion of time, leaving behind only the most extreme and vivid recollections, which are almost guaranteed to be memories full of anguish and regret. Do you understand now? The fate of all long-life species is to no longer feel joy and happiness, left only with hatred and regret etched into the heart. Under such extreme conditions, a person's ego starts to crumble. And that is the beginning of the Marastruck condition. Short-life species don't need to worry about this. Feel better? Phew, I do. I never had memories to begin with. No, you still don't understand. The condition isn't caused by memories, but by the emotional threshold having been... Never mind. 
You can regard it as a memory issue. Only a handful of converted alchemists and healers. They can drive fantastic creatures into battle and strengthen their bodies with medicinal pellets. But they are no match for the Cloud Knights. That's why they decided to spread this demonic vapor. There is a gulf in strength between us, yet they still emerged into the open and rebelled. Something isn't right. They must be waiting for some shift in fortune. I will come at once when the crucibles are doused and the smoke dissipates. <sighs> Huh. I feel like even though long-life species get to live forever... They aren't so different from us short-life species when it comes to worries and suffering. Oh, wait! Miss Tingyun! Why are you still here? You're too close to the Crucible! Thank you for the concern, but I'm fine. The General commanded me to stay with you. I dare not go against military orders. Your life is more important, Miss Tingyun. Go back. We can explain to the General. <laughs> There's really no need. I've spent my years traveling the universe. Not to mention, I'm younger and stronger than I look. Even you benefactors have probably lived longer than me. Seems like the smoke is getting thinner. Not thin enough. We need to hurry. Reach the end of the story in your own way. Yay! We did it! Oh, can't see the smoke anymore! <sighs> Excellent! I'll lead my troops to the rendezvous. So, you succeeded in dowsing the elixir cauldrons. Unimportant. The inevitable is already upon us. Don Shu. It's you. I have met you before in my capacity as Chief Alchemist, Master Diviner. You don't seem surprised. Indeed. The General and I knew that the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus must be hiding in the Alchemy Commission. However, without evidence, we couldn't bring charges before the Commissions. We had to wait for you to show yourselves. And now, your charges are many. Drawing Stellaron spirits into the Sienjo, resurrecting the Ambrosial Arbor, striking down our people with Mara. The Ten Lords Commission will address these transgressions during your reckoning. Crimes? If I am guilty, then all of our Sienjo ancestors are also guilty. They were the ones who accepted the blessings of the Abundance, and turned their descendants into long-life species. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus are only walking on the road our ancestors once took. How is it a crime to seek ascendance? In days of old, the roots of the Ambrosial Arbor enveloped the Sienjo Lafu like a living creature. We controlled the Stellar Seas, and none could stand in our way. Everyone could become celestial, and shift form at will. Divine miracles descended onto all nine Sienjo ships. What a glorious time that was. How far the Sienjo has fallen. We consent to be commanded by the devilish archer. 
suffer continuously at the hands of the denizens of abundance. And the Ten Lords Commission even forces us to give up our immortality. How pitiful. I do not blame you for your ignorance. We were not born in the era when the Ambrosial Arbor first descended. Nor did we witness its miracles. But now, we now have an opportunity to restore the ancient laws. <laughs> Forgive me for thinking you might have harbored some profound enlightenment. Yours is the same old talk of those who seek power, and give up on their humanity. Our Xi and Zhou ancestors fought side by side with the Arbiter, laid waste to the Arbor, and established the Ten Lords Commission to lay down the lines between life and death. In doing so, we enshrined our future as human beings. Celestials? There are no Celestials on the Xi and Zhou. The divine miracles of the abundance, the manipulation of life and death. Your deeds are nothing but evil. I have nothing to say to you, Master Diviner. You have already made your decision. You have discarded power. A most foolish choice. Time for a fun. <laughs> Oh my this God. combat needs optimized. <laughs> this is double speed. Why? Why? She said. The Ambrosial Arbor's descent will bring us undying bodies. The one who gave us the Stellaron said that. Antilia, the disciples of Sanctus Medicus have fulfilled our promise. You, Lord Ravager, must do the same. Now, quickly. Little pawn, must you force me to intervene directly? I'm loath to flout my philosophy of destruction. <laughs> Never mind. It would seem the time has come for other means of dismantling the Xianzhou from within. <sighs> what a shame. Uh, it would have been nice to observe for a little longer. <laughs> You received the gift of abundance. Surely you can withstand the blessing of destruction. Mr. Yun! <laughs> uh -huh. Benefactors, allow me to reintroduce myself. I am Lord Ravager Fantilli. I have come to the same purpose, to set in motion the self-destruction of the Sienge. Lives ablaze! Mr. Yoon, the Lord Ravager of the Antimatter Legion? But uh, how can that be? Keep calm, all of you! This is a formidable enemy. We have to stay together! Lands with the ready. They have no qualms about dealing out destruction by their own hand. But since that stubborn general of yours has Come forced on. me to take center stage, I'll make sure I steal the show. <laughs> My apologies for leaving so soon, but I have an appointment to keep. I'm sure my friends here will be happy to entertain you. Where did it go? 
Mr. Yang, you're smart. What happened just now? <sighs> the flame we witnessed claimed to be Lord Ravager Fantilia, a name I've heard other nameless speak of in the past. She's one of seven Lord Ravagers who serve Nanook, and finds pleasure in witnessing the self-destruction of mortals. She's led countless souls down a dark and hopeless path. Meaning that Ting Yun had long since fallen under the Lord Ravager's influence? I don't believe so. Fantilia revels in watching a corrupted mind eating away its host from inside out, until the obliteration of both is achieved. But there was no indication that Ting Yun had been misguided or manipulated. It's possible that the Ting Yun we knew wasn't her true self, but an image Fantilia devised to serve her own purposes. You're saying that the real Ting Yun is still... I'm sorry, March. I can't say with any certainty where the real Ting Yun may be, or at what point she was replaced by the imposter. Without knowing where the body vanished to, it'll be tough to get an answer. At this point, it's all just conjecture and hope. But if that body belonged to the real Ting Yun, it does raise the question of why Fantilia would go to such lengths to destroy any evidence of her. Wouldn't it be more in line with her destructive nature to leave Ting Yun's remains behind as a, a display of power? I believe this to be Fantilia's goal. To sow seeds of doubt among us and ensnare us in a malevolent trap. It's clear that the sudden resurgence of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus is all connected to the Lord Ravager. Pretending to be a San Zhou citizen? Planting a Celeron in the La Fu? All part of her plan to bring about our self-destruction. Ventilia is aiming for the Ambrosial Arbor. If she succeeds, the La Fu will be deprived of its roots, making its destruction all too easy. We must stop her. We need to take a star skiff to scale Gorge Waterscape. The Ambrosial Arbor can be sealed from that self. Let's make haste. That imposter had the audacity to carry out her nefarious plans right under our noses. How utterly despicable. What worries me more is... just how many more antimatter saboteurs are at large. It all happened so suddenly. But looking back, I think Mr. Yang was right. Ting Yun was behaving strangely. She was fascinated with the Abundance's creations. Since she was an Amicaster dispatched by the Skyfaring Commission, it's evident that there must indeed be a person with her name in the Commission. We'll have to let the Cloud Knights get to the bottom of what happened to the real Ting Yun. As for the Ting Yun who accompanied us all that way, it's like what Mr. Yang said. Her appearance was designed to sow seeds of doubt among us. We cannot allow ourselves to fall into her trap. It is a delve governed by the Vidyatara. Supposedly an ancient oceanic region transferred from the Vidyatara home planet. After the Ambrosial Arbor was broken in two during the war, its roots were left gnarled and broken. Yet it never died. The Alliance decided to seal the Arbor within Scale Gorge Waterscape, entrust it to the High Elders of the Vidyatara, and rely on the power of Long Scions to constrain it. It has been so long. No one knows whether the seal remains. Even if it does, I doubt it will hinder that spectral Lord Ravager. I've reported the current situation to the Seat of Divine Foresight. 
He made no further contact after we communicated at the Matrix of Prescience. He said he had important matters to personally attend to. The situation stands on the edge of a precipice. We must trust in the General. <laughs>